Hello friends from all around the world. Greetings from N Generation Project. Now before we get to today's restream episode, Revelation 14 to 15, woes, indignation, vindication. This is a video rebroadcast of the daily Council of Time podcast shows. Number 28 These podcasts are of spiritual wisdom from well-renowned and respected Michael from the Council of Time. Though we hold COT in the highest esteem, we have no affiliation with the Council of Time, its members, or its only official website, councilloftime.com. We have no authority to speak on their behalf apart from disseminating God's word from their very popular website, Council of Time. We hope these podcasts inspire you in the word of God and pursue truth and knowledge, something our project holds at the core of our project. If you would like a better idea about the Council of Time and their beliefs, policies, and procedures, or would like to make a donation to them, please visit their only official website at the links provided in the description below. Thank you again for clicking on this video as a small channel and project. We appreciate every single individual who has shared their time with us. Blessings. Now sit back and relax. Enjoy this episode number 28. Revelation 14:15. Woes. Indignation. Vindication. Good to see you guys. Yesterday was, uh, this couldn't happen yesterday. Couldn't happen. Guys, good evening. Hope that you guys are around. How many of you, I know the admins are, how many other people know about the dates? In the uh, KD section of the uh, page, how many of you? Type a one if you have viewed the dates in the KD section. Anybody can go to the KD section, by the way. There's a set of dates on the right-hand side. And, of course, you guys see the correlation. It's not a good indicator at all, right? I believe those dates were about, I don't know, how long, how long were those days out? Let's see. It should be about, those are old dates, especially in February. Those dates were determined in January. Those dates were. Now, to be so precise means, or to be close to it means that certain influences are quite real, right? And the influences are going to end up burning up a part of this planet, which is not going to be good. It just won't be good. So what will happen is those dates are going to turn into cautions with detailed information beside them. That way people can have a heads up. What I cannot do is go on the air, right? Start talking about those dates. I can't do that. I cannot do that. I have to be very careful in what's being specified here too. As we get closer and closer to those times, then it's not going to matter. It just won't matter. Now, we're talking about the dates that are in the KD file, not the beginning of our calendar. It started two days ago, right? Today is day, what, what's today? Day three. Today is day three, okay? But when you're tracking large influences, you guys remember something. We've had a space program for a long time, a long time. During that time, development of certain craft have been around for a very long time. Man has not halted his adventures into the great unknown, but in fact increased them, especially in the 60s. And the drawback that everybody saw, the diversion that everybody saw was one thing, but make no mistake, there was a different uh, agenda going forward from that time, and it had to be outside of governing eyes, right? Certain things the public would never agree with. Well, it, it, the ventures are not quite what you think. But in those ventures, they have discovered and found out that a lot of prophecy is real. Now, we're talking about government entities who actually believe in prophecies, right? However they speak on live television, I really don't pay attention to all of that. I don't. They know what they know, which is why you see... They're going to care less and less about the process. They're going to care less and less about many things because greater worries are in the makings, right? Somebody says, don't know, you don't have to have an account to see the KD files, but that's in the public domain. 
that page does not require an account at all, right? So to be very uh, vague about those dates, but you guys know what they're associated to. You'll see that track record over time. You'll keep seeing it over time, over and over and over and over time. But the they cannot tell anybody, even if, if they knew of an impending problem that would consume, say, one-third of the planet, they couldn't tell anybody about that issue. They couldn't do it. They would kill a person before that information got out, right? And believe me, they are uh, doing exactly what they can, right, to divert everybody's attention from one thing to another. Because if people knew what the future actually was, right, and what was actually coming, if they actually knew, all of you would be disinterested in everything that's happening today. You, your mind would not be there, right? It just wouldn't be there. You wouldn't worry about your issues, problems, or anything else. You would have a different mindset. Most people would go into survival mode. Even if it were three years off, people would go into survival mode because it does not matter the time duration. Once people have an understanding of what's actually going to take place, they're going to change their way of life. In order for this social project to continue between people and governments and your lifestyle and you wake up, you go to work, you make some money, you pay for the hut or the house you're living in, and you have your projects and hopes and all these things built inside the system. In order for that to work, your entire hope system has to be inside of what they built. It can never be outside. Once you break free of that, you begin to see what everything is, is actually working toward. You're going to see larger mechanisms you did not notice before, right? And so in that case, don't expect for anybody to voluntarily disclose any of those things until the passage of a few heavenly events that nobody can deny, right? Things will have to come to a point where they cannot be denied. There are people right now who have tried to disclose things. They've either been killed or they are severely broken. If they take a person's money away and they ruin that person's reputation, that person cannot survive, period. It's, it's been that way for a long time. I don't even, I don't really support individual people, but i tell you something else that saddens me. Actually, it gets to me. It does. Now, make no mistake, I'm not biased concerning any presidential candidate. But just let me say this for a minute. If I had a candidate I believed in and some legal stuff was going against that candidate, do you think for one moment I wouldn't break my neck to give that person what I could to help them out of the bind they're in? Why in the world is Donald Trump swamped with all that he, he's got to pay that money 350 million dollars that should have been paid by now you're talking about 70 million supporters plus right 70 million supporters plus five bucks a piece and the problem is solved why won't what, what's holding people back what's stopping people I, I don't get it i really don't get it i don't get it it seems like in this world if you don't uh, steal money you just simply won't get it it is one of the number one anti-tools of the enemy himself. And it works every... Why does it work so well? Especially among saints, right? Why does that work, especially among saints? My goodness. There are just, I don't know, I would say out of 100 believers, there are two that will act upon their convictions. The rest will not. I just, I don't get it. I don't get it. There's no way he should be in that trouble. In fact... Any presidential candidate that somebody believed in, how could they be in trouble like that? I get the, I get what they did in New York, okay? I get that. But that's not going to pay for the bills. It's not going to do it. I don't get that. I don't get it. Because when you believe in something, right, what's the real, I'll tell you something, people are, because money is so precious to a lot of people. That is the make or break factor that shows what a person truly believes in. And for the most part, people hear, people listen, people wait. But as far as believing in something, that's a different story, right? Some people, yes, they do support. Some people have 
given things to cover those expenses they have. But the majority of the people don't. There's no way he should be have that problem with all those supporters. That's just impossible. How many people are in America, right? 70 million solid numbers on his side. That What does that tell you guys? What does that tell all of us? What does that tell you? That we, right? Somebody said it would be funny, go fund me for Trump. No, that wouldn't be funny. That wouldn't be funny. Because there are avenues right now where people can support Trump. Now, I can't confirm if there's a GoFundMe or not, but there are avenues to support Trump. The person, Trump, not the, not the presidential candidate, but the person, there are avenues, right? So we have a conundrum here, something, something very uh, iffy going on, right? We have something iffy. But the people, somehow, with people, somehow, these tangible things that we collect to ourselves, somehow we're going to have to be broken from that. I can see why in Revelation people lose everything. I can see why the great floods that are coming this year, in a couple of months, the great floods will begin. I can see why they have to come. I don't like it. God knows I hate floods, but they're coming. They're coming because people can't let go of their true security. If I had my security in my stuff, there's no way I could have my security in the Lord. There's no way. There's just no way. There's no way. Wouldn't happen. So in Revelation, you see a breaking of people from their tangible things. In fact, in one prophecy, it said, forsake earthly goods and save the soul. That's a direct quote. I can't tell you what from, but it is one of the most valued quotes I've ever heard. Forsake earthly goods and save the soul. A lot of people won't be able to do that. Mammon, the history of mammon itself, I know people have their narratives. But based on archaeology and based on findings and manuscripts, mammon had to directly deal with tangible things, riches, silver, gold, stuff like that. And then Jesus compared God to mammon. He said, you cannot serve two masters. You'll love one, hate the other, cling to one right? Despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. He only compared himself to mammon. Why though? Why would he ever do that? Why would Christ ever do that? Anybody know? Because in truth, it is the hardest thing to break free from. It is. And if you think it's easy to break away from tangible things, you haven't gone through that crucible yet. It's not so easy. It's easier said than done. You're talking about an absolute total lifestyle change without entertainment, without additional comforts, with nothing to fulfill that emotional void when you need it. It is not easy. It is not easy. It's something that a person, I believe a person has a personal responsibility to gauge themselves about that and then to break it accordingly because they won't make it. Somebody asked me, they keep, they kept asking me about an EMP, not any of you guys, but they're, they're worried about EMPs. And these are not, you know, nobodies. These are somebodies, and they're worried about EMPs. And so I told a few individuals, do you really think you could handle an EMP that was effective upon our power grid? The person said, oh, yeah, really? I said, so go home and turn your breaker off for seven days, and then you answer that question. Because you don't know what to do until your power is turned out. When your power is off, anybody ever been through a long durational power outage? You think you know or you think you can really visualize and feel what to expect prior to it, the power going out. But when the power goes out, anybody who's ever been in that situation, you have an understanding that after about three or four days, you start changing. Everything starts changing right? It's very different. It almost feels like it's, it's unjust, like you've been jailed or something. You're, you're talking about a whole lifestyle change where you don't have the same comforts anymore. That's what you're talking about. And people take the EMP thing lightly. I'll tell you something. I'll be honest. If an EMP went off, whatever you save is still not going to work because eventually you're going to run out of power. You are. You're also going to have people coming to collect these parts so they can make transformers again. 
and people will be on the move. As soon as the sewer treatment plants start backing up and that poisonous water is fed through all the pipes, there's going to be a problem. It'll be a big problem. Now, are we prone to an EMP? Now, one military base in the USA is prone to an EMP, but every other place is. They have their power grid underneath ground, protected from an EMP. They had that mandate to have that done prior to 2021, and they did it. They're effectively off the grid, so they can run autonomously outside the grid. They don't need the grid. We need the grid. And so civilian companies like AP and Allegheny Power and all these different folks and all the, all the way to California, they have plans to put the lines underneath the ground, but they can't seem to generate enough revenue, which is why they've been playing with the numbers, right? As far as billing people an extra 2% here, 2% there, all these, they're trying to get that uh, cash influx so they can do that. They will not make the date. It won't happen. Sorry, nobody wants to pay an extra 2%. And every time they try to raise it, well, it's fought by municipalities. And they won't let them do that. So guess what? Because the people don't want to pay any, but they don't want to pay a dime extra for electricity. They're not going to have a protected grid, period. Only rich corporations, not whole corporations, the rich ones, they'll be protected. Because they have their own backup systems underground, deep underground. So that'd be different. Most of your financial institutions, the big ones, but a mile underground, they have generation uh, networks. They let other people use it, but everybody else is on their own. Why? Because the people will not cooperate. And the problem is the messaging. I'm just giving you the real case, the, the real deal that you're in the middle of. There's no, if, if they were to come on the news and say, listen, this is what we face. We need to put these lines underground. And it's going to cost everybody a little extra. If they would tell people that, I don't think people would go for it. I don't. I don't. They would want too much proof, too much this, too much that. And by the time they got it, it'd be too late. We are in a very, I keep putting those dates up in the KD files, right? Because we keep having these solar issues. That's what we keep having. That's kind of not going to bode too well, these solar issues. Thank God they're pointing, you know, south. They're pointing to the southwest, and, and, and this morning, for the first time, the parts of the southeast woke up, because it's been quiet. In fact, it says, I'm sorry, it says, during the past few days, we observed solar activity in the northeast, northwest, southwest, with the southeast remaining dormant, but not anymore. The southeast woke up earlier today with a huge blast, and that was today. That's today. Today's uh, article they're reporting. So, today... A series of flares went off. One was humongous, which was one I was watching. By the way, which was caused by an influence. And if you take note, it was in the southeast. Southeast quadrant of the sun is being affected by something. And it's about to have company. And it's a sad thing that people, they have no idea, no idea what to look for. And we're talking, now this went off at 153 UTC time. Today, that was early, early, right? Early, early. So anyway, this huge blast went into space, right? At the edge of the uh, southeast uh, horizon, right? So, and it was in association with some of the active regions of the sun, rotating into view. But we know it's only a matter of time before those areas come right to position Earth, at least the southern half of this planet. And at that point, we're going to have bad problems because they're not going to get out of the way. And today, there have been four vitrific events on this earth. And what that means is there have been four times that sand and dirt has been turned into glass. Not one just in the Middle East, not Dwarka and all these different places, not just there, but the entire earth. They dig through the strata or the rock and that for the life of them, they will not give people the truthful information. They know about the magnetic changes. They know about the rotational changes. They know about the foliage and the change in direction of their growth ring on a tree, for example, right? On a tree, the rings in a tree. Did you not know on a plant, when you look close enough, there's an identification of where that plant points to the most, its orientation of its leaves, 
and, and they call it some type of a bump ring or something like that, but it tells you where the sun was. They know that the sun was rising on the wrong side of the earth a couple of times. Now we're about to endure that again. The problem is this. When, the, when we have a different, when the sun rises, it's going to rise in the west. When it rises in the west, the earth will have changed its orientation. Now, before you go, before you think the earth has to stop and go back the other way, listen to me. If you take a sphere and you rotate a sphere, right, you flip that sphere with the earth still rotating. The direction is effectively changed. But you have a bunch of turbulence in the process. So that means you have icing events and other events in between it. You have events where life can be frozen instantaneously. Minus 300 degrees temperatures, right? Can you imagine that? Just coming over your house and anything it touches is going to freeze instantly. We're going to see all those events again. There are events humanity will not get through. The majority of humanity will not get through them because they have no place to go. If you don't go eight feet underneath the surface of the earth, you won't survive. And those who go 800 feet underneath the earth, most of them are going to be trapped and they'll never be able to come topside. Why? Because of molten rock. That's why. Because of volcanism. It'll go to an all-time high. Magma will ooze right over the top of their little mountains. The mountain ranges, which are high in altitude, will not be high in altitude then. They won't go over the real changes in the earth. And they'll debate on TV all day to get everybody to stick to one paradigm. Yet they hide things. If it were so straightforward, there would be no secrets in archaeology. Wouldn't you agree? There'd be no secrets in geology. Don't you agree? There would be no lost records. For some reason, they lost, uh, I believe it was 22 years of records. How foolish do they think people are? But, People are okay so long as you feed them with money, which brings me to something else. They will distract you with money. I'm telling you right now. From crypto to the markets, you're going to be distracted with money. People are going to have a good old time. You watch and see. Mark my words. You're going to have a great time. And they won't be, their attention is going to be effectively diverted. To money is going to be the tool. It's going to grab everybody's attention. And fill everybody with dreams of Disney World. All the while, your world is going to be changing. Things will continue to arrive here and to surface. The oceans will continue to change. Nickel will continue to pour up from the Atlantic. All sorts of things are going to happen. And then a blackness nobody ever thought possible will come. And it will not lift. Boy, oh boy. Anyway. That's what Revelation is about, in part. The other part of Revelation is the closure of your process, your personal victory. There's a prayer in Revelation also, a communication. Pray that you partake of the first resurrection, of which the second death has no power. There will be a second death. Anybody involved in the second death will be condemned. I know you may not have heard of that. Because people, yeah, I don't know. Some of the more popular folks out there on television, they don't like to discuss Revelation because it drives people away. But we're in for a pretty rough ride. And it's not going to be something that you will have proof to see it coming. It's not going to happen that way. It's going to take you before proof is ever that visible. The moment you will know is the moment when it takes a third of the earth. And it will continue to devour things as more and more plagues reach us, sir. Don't worry, you're going to have a foreshadowing of both physical plagues that will affect humans and people, or, or people and animals and plants. You're going to have a test of that. Three specific diseases. One of them will build up fairly soon. Yeah. The pokas are coming. All sorts of pokas, they're coming. And they will sweep, unfortunately. It will get some of the children. I'm trying to scare you. Just trying to tell you. Because children will be the best delivery system for it. Nobody imposed it. It is quite natural. But many of us have lost our immune system. 
due to too many antibiotics. And you know how doctors do. They fix you up while they kill you at the same time. Point blank. We're not on YouTube, so I can say that. Anyway, which means they fix one problem, right? And you run into eight more. The same medications you take depletes uh, organ, certain organs that you have. Your kidneys take a toll. Your liver takes a toll, right? Your diaphragm takes a toll due to weaker lung activity, so on and so forth. Blood, blood circulation takes its toll due to a, a loss of copper, actually, in your veins. All sorts of things happen. So when they fix one thing, they offset others. That's just how it is. And we are completely reliant upon the store and upon other people's knowledge. The folks who had real knowledge, right, first-hand knowledge with uh, years and years of knowledge, most of those people are gone. I used to love talking to older people. They were full of knowledge. Now everything is in a book. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some smart people on the earth who are very smart with man-made things. They are. They're very smart with DNA. They are, right? They can tell you everything about DNA. They can tell you lots about the human body. And of all the things they could have done, they don't, they don't really concentrate on fixing people. They sustain people where they are. Have you noticed? People aren't fixed. They are sustained. Because the pharmacies, well, they get paid when they issue, put you on a medication. They get a kickback. They get a bonus. Doctors are interested in you taking medications because they get paid that way. They get paid that way. And, of course, uh, sometimes pay is attractive. Once you get money, you want more of it. Greed kicks in. They do. It will feed greed. Greed kicks in. And you want more. You develop a big lifestyle. You had to pay for that lifestyle. So now you have to keep that money flow going. You pay for everything or else you got to downsize again. That's the way that works. Anyway, there are people, you guys, some of you out there, you may be hooked on something. It's not your fault, really. But I'll tell you something. When you're talking to the Lord about your issues and medication and everything else, stop pressuring yourselves. Let me give you this one small piece of advice. Talk to your father where you are through Christ. Do it. Talk to him where you are. Say, Lord, here I am. What can I do? Yes, you may take Percocets. You may take this. You may take that. But start where you are. And say, Lord, I'm, I'm, you, know, you, you know my status. This is where I am. Stop racking your brain as to how you can fix it. You can't fix it, or you would have fixed it. The Lord has to do that for you. So in the meanwhile, right, just go ahead and stand up and start walking towards him. Because if you're not careful, you being whole is going to be an excuse for you not to do anything. And you won't help a soul. You'll just have a problem. And you won't do anything until that problem is fixed. And then your life is going to be stalled, right? Get up where you are with your problems and everything else. And say, Lord, what can I do? That's all you have to do. Put your mind there. Put your mind there and go for it. Put your mind there and go for it. As you walk and as you commit to serve, I'm telling you right now, the Lord will make changes in your life. Nobody can make. Nobody can make that. Someone said, Mike, is it true that if someone takes antidepressants, they're going straight to hell when they die? <laughs> Listen to me. Just to be careful. Just to be careful. The flesh is kaput. Your flesh is kaput. My flesh is kaput. Your flesh is not going to get you into heaven. It's not. All of us have defiled our flesh. All of us have. Why do I say that? Because you've changed its configuration. All of us lusted after some type flesh. All of us were gluttons concerning the flesh in some way, form, or fashion. Your flesh is kaput. People are so preoccupied. With saving the flesh, they don't even know that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil and to save our souls. You will shed your flesh like it's a dirty raincoat, and you'll get a new vessel with what, listen, with what you have, with what you are, antidepressants and all. Get up. Get up and start exercising your heart to serve the Lord. In truth, you want to serve the Lord. In truth, you want to do something for Christ. Then do it. Stop saying you don't have enough. Stop saying you're not ready. Stop saying you don't look right enough yet. No, just get up and do it. Because you know what? You'll never have enough. You'll never be ready enough. You'll never look good enough. If you start going in that direction, you're just going to sit there for another 
what, three, four, five years. You don't have three or four or five years to sit around. You do not. Stand up where you are. You know how it, they used to teach one thing that was true back in the day. They would say, come as you are. You remember that? Unfortunately, when you did come as you were, if you were not like them, they kick you out. But the Lord says, come as you were. You know, he told one church, one angel of one church, hold fast to what you have. Strengthen those things that remain that are ready to die. See, God already knows that things in your life are ready to perish. You know what the Lord said? Hold fast to what you have. Take everything that you have left right? And start utilizing. Hold fast to what you have. The Lord knows your status. He knows what you're fighting against. It's been prophesied. He already knows. Hold fast to what you have. Stop trying to be perfect and then serve. Don't do that. Don't do that. Stand up where you are. It's one thing Satan hates about me. See, I'm supposed to be you know, perfect before I do any of this. I'm supposed to have a, a you know, a, a, be approved with this group, that group, this group over here and that group, but it didn't happen that way. It did not. I was just bold enough to say, yes, Lord. It's as simple as that. That's why I didn't, that's why I didn't stop. Despite all of what's been thrown in my direction, I have not stopped. Why? You want to know why? Because when you have a passion for servitude, the Lord will anoint you to do it. That's why. And what, where you have an anointing, nothing has power to stop that. It's called desire, strong desire. So there can be no condition that would ever cause me to start going in the opposite direction because it's a passion, a passion. I do what I do at great loss. Jimmy crack coin because I'm not, I'm doing it, right? Because I honor Christ. Do you honor Christ? Because if you do, Stand up where you are with what you have and do what you can. Do what you can. My goodness, most people, a lot of people, and according to the word of God, many people are going to be compromised. That's in the book of Revelation. Jesus talked about that they're compromised, right? And if you read the book of Acts, you'll certainly see how those authoritative figures in Jerusalem tried to stop Jesus and the apostles, and they never stopped. The Lord said they would continue to do that until the restoration of the Lord's appointed time would come. They would continue to do that. And what I'm telling you is you have enough fortitude to overpower the devil in everything he would throw in your direction. Stop believing he can stop you. That's step number one. And believe you cannot believe the devil's ploys and his statements you cannot believe that and believe Christ at the same time. You cannot. You're going to have to choose. Will you believe Christ or are you going to believe Satan? Satan says you cannot do it. Satan says you're going to perish. That's what Satan says. What does the Lord say? That he will deliver you. That he will be your strength. That he will finish the work he began in you. That's what the Lord says. It's a matter of who you listen to and who you believe. Now, who do you believe? Who do you believe? Satan, do you believe him? You believe the Lord. Do you believe Christ? Hopefully you believe Christ. One more thing I'll tell you. The Lord never enforced anything upon anybody. You want to be effective? Don't ever enforce the word of God upon anybody. See, in these talks, right, you guys can join me in my rants. I'm going to call this a rant. You guys can join me in these things. I'm not going to force the word of God upon anybody. You know how some people can subtly demean you unless you start to agree with them. I can't do that. I'm not going to do that. I wholeheartedly disagree with that. Everybody who steps foot in the kingdom of God, they will have chosen the most high. You know what happens when you choose something for somebody else? That's how people run their kids away because they'll choose things for them. And as soon as that child gets old enough to get away, you don't see them that much because they don't want your governance over their life. They love you, but they don't want you to govern them, right? So it's not real. If you force, say, a young male to play football, but it's not in his heart, he's not going to continue that. So he's going to play football, and then all of what he learned in football is going to be wasted. When he departs, he's going to hate football because he was forced to do that. A lot of people, because they grew up in certain families, they go to church, and then when they grow up, they never step foot in a church again. I know people like that. 
right? Because they were forced to go to church. They want nothing to do with church. But I've also seen people who were raised up in a Christian family and they attended church on Sunday, but nobody ever forced them to believe stuff, this and the other, but they advised them. The whole household believed. And those young kids then aspired to be like their parents. And so they grew up, they wanted to believe in Christ because they saw the, the echoes of the doings of Christ in the parents. When a child or when a person can choose something, if they choose it, it will stick. If somebody, if I were to choose something for you guys, say, say I signed somebody a certain role in COT. I didn't ask, I just assigned you something. And you do that job. Guess what? Guess what? Now, you're working under an obligation. You know what happens with an obligation? If I forced you to do it and your heart's not in it, you're doing it for other reasons, which is by way of an obligation. People go to work, right? You guys go to work. Some of you guys go to work. But you have to go to work. So if somebody handed you $20 million, would you still go to that same job? Would any of you work? Let's say if somebody handed you $400 million, would you go to work? How many would go to work? How many would? Oh, see, there we go. There we go. See? That's easy. That's, there it is right there. You force someone to believe. And they go through the motions. It is disingenuous from the beginning. Sometimes. If the Lord intervenes, he can fix our messes. But most often, it causes people to hold a grudge against being forced to do anything. If you love a job and that company went broke, and you really loved that job and you loved that company, they could go broke and you would still work. If your boss came around and said, hey, I can't pay you for the next two months, would you still work here, though? That would be difficult, right? Not for the person, not for the person who is doing that job because they believe in the work of the company. That person would go without a paycheck for two months. They would because they believe in the company. When we believe in Christ, we're not just going through motions, but we believe in Christ. It doesn't matter what comes. It does not matter. We're not going to bail out. We're not. See, some people, listen carefully, please. Some people, they don't like to talk about revelation. Because there's a heaviness associated with revelation. And when things get tough, tough, first thing they'll say is, I don't know if I can take it. But there's a problem with that. You mean to tell me there's a situation that will cause you to turn away from Christ? Because if it is, your whole heart is not in it. That means you're looking for something. That means you want God to do something. And you're waiting for him to do something. And your problem is, he has not done it yet. You're saying to yourself, I don't know how long I can hold on. Now, it doesn't mean you're rotten. That's not what it means. It just means that your premise has been a little off. Listen to me, folks. Please, don't follow Christ for anything he can do for you. But realize what he has already accomplished in your life. Realize he already died for you and went through all that pain and torture just for you. So that everything that you ever did against the living God could actually be forgiven by his perfect sacrifice. That's what he did. He undid your doom. Think about that. Anything you ever did, anything you could do, Jesus died for that. He paid the price. I'm going to tell you something. That wasn't just somebody dying and then they're gone. No. Oh, he felt the anguish of our sins, the heaviness. He took upon himself the sins of the world. How in the world do you survive? That means... To take upon yourselves the sins of the world means you have knowledge of all those sins. You cannot, you would not have a sane mind if you did that. The only one that can hold us together, if we did that, is the most high. And that would take some work. I'd fall apart in a heartbeat just, just with my own. He did it for everybody. And he refused, he refused to not die. He even, it even demonstrates in the word of God that he was, he hit a moment where he said, Lord, if you're, if possible, you can take this cup from me. Nevertheless, I will be done. So we know he felt the terror, the terror. And he did what he did out of love for us. We were his strength going forward. Love, his love for us, the father's love for us. So then for what he's already done, follow him. Not for what it can do. Because you'll upset yourself. If you ever get upset, 
and you're a Christian. It's because something you want is delayed. Now, there's some of these ministers out here that are famous, they'll teach you where you got to manifest it and this, that. And let me tell you something. Can I tell you something? There is a true blessing, and there's a blessing of chance that many people work by. Here's what I mean by that. Your Father in Heaven has already blessed you big time. But see, here's the truth. For a lot of people, it's not enough. It's not enough. I can almost guarantee there are men out there just like me, right? Here's what I mean by that. I don't show a lot of emotion. I don't. But I'll get close to the line for dying for someone, right? I'll give it all I have. Do you not know that if a person cannot perceive it, they'll say you never did it. They'll find out too late, right? I always hold my tongue, always. There'll never come a day when I'll say, I did this and I did that and I did that. I'll never do that. It stays inside. And it always reminds me about the Messiah, right? About what he did. Yet we're here on this earth and we honestly believe, we honestly believe that he's slow in doing what he's doing for us. How do I equate that? Because we'll sit there and say, Lord, please, I've done everything required. How come I don't have this? We're not saying this. This is what we feel that we refuse to communicate. I should have so-and-so because I did this right by the letter. And it's not here. I'm having a problem believing because this, that, and the other. Are you kidding? Isn't that how we do? Because if that were not true, we'd never get upset. If we did not receive a thing, we would not get upset. But we do get upset. Why? Why do we get upset? Why would we get upset over anything if we honestly believe the Messiah is not slow, is not slack, is not overlooking something, Right? Why would we then alter our own internal narrative and say, maybe I'm not worth it? Why would we dare say that? And we're breathing air, our life being sustained by the Most High, throwing a tantrum, correct? Throwing a tantrum because we did not get what we asked for. We didn't get what we think we should because God didn't sustain something we wanted sustained because he didn't fix something we wanted fixed. I've heard people say, I did everything. And still, nothing. They did everything. In order for me to say I did everything, I would have to know everything in the mind of the living God. I can never say I did everything. All I can say is I gave it my all. And if I ever said that, I'm going to stand up in peace, knowing that I gave my all. See, the scripture says doing all of what you can do to stand there for. It's true, because when you give it your all, you can stand. What happens when you don't give it your all? Here it comes. You'll sit there and say, maybe it was because. Maybe I didn't get this because. Maybe I didn't get this because. Maybe this didn't happen because. If you have a because, you've already messed up. You didn't give it your whole heart. You give something all of what you have. You'll not hold your head down. You won't. You will not hold your head down. Why is that? Because an unnatural confidence will come into you. That's not from you. And in that moment, you'll say, I have done everything I can do. And you'll stand there having said a truth. And when you say that truth, an unnatural confidence will mingle with yours. And there's no way you can put your head down. You'll be comforted in that same moment. You'll be comforted in that same moment. Hmm? That's not what people are doing, is it? Not everybody, but we can do it. Listen, when you hear something you haven't done, there's an opportunity to do it. That means it's not over, is it? If you haven't done that, then smile. A way has been refined. When you see something new in the Bible that really gets to you, it convicts you, then smile. Say, thank you, Lord. I didn't know that. Now let me go for it. Thank you, Lord. I didn't know it. That means you're learning, you're growing, you're overcoming. If you don't learn anything, you stop growing. If you know everything, you're going to have a sad life. You're going to have a sad life. Just sad. It's a pitiful thing when people, they really do propose they know everything. Because there's no growth. You can't grow if you know everything. You can't. There are no answers if you know everything. None. It's when you don't know everything, you can smile. 
because that way that was messed up yesterday, right? The Lord will straighten that out a bit today. He will guide you that way. He'll guide you. People have tried it their way. Time for them to do it the Lord's way. Be guided spiritually. He'll do it in a way that you still can't comprehend. I still can't comprehend how he's doing it. I can suspect all day. I'm telling you right now, I can't comprehend that. Can't do it. He'll let me know things that's impossible for me to know. He has messed quite a few people up through me, mentally, by what came through me. And it's not from me. It's not from me. It's from him. It's not from me. But it's a beautiful thing because in every single case, it's caused someone to give the Lord a second look, an honest look. It's caused someone to lay down that, that imitation thing that we all build to survive in this world called an identity. And they exposed their true selves to the most high. And they grew and they overcame. And now they can't believe it. And it all started with a, with a dodo like myself. And I'm thankful for that. Very thankful. Doesn't mean I'm perfect. No. Doesn't mean I have all the answers. You have lost your mind. The Lord has the answers. And because he has the answers, I don't need to have them. All I need to know is the Lord that I'm serving has all the answers. I'm good with that. I don't need to know it all. I have access to the one who does know it all. How about that? Tell that Give that one to Satan. See what he does with it. Because some of you out there say, I'm not smart enough. Well, good. That means your brain will never get in the way of that divine mind of Christ that will flow right through you to another person. So that when you recite an entire chapter out of a book that you didn't, you couldn't make heads or tails of, you'll know when you're speaking, it's not you. When the Lord speaks through, you become a student. It's almost like you're listening to yourself. You pronounce words you never pronounced before. Because when the Holy Spirit takes over, you will set aside. You're not going to be worried about getting a hand clap, a pat on the back, or anything else. You will have been a partaker of a true heavenly gift. And you will not be the same. You won't. But you will have a heavier burden. You will. When your eyes are opened and you see the truth, you're not like a child at a carnival. You're like the guy who knows he's got to pay a big bill for running all that equipment. That somebody's going to have an undercooked meal and they're going to get sick and he needs insurance. You're going to have knowledge you never thought you had, but it's going to be kind of heavy. And for those people that want to know everything, they have no idea what they're asking. The more you know, the more you realize just how omnipotent the father is. Anyway, polka. Not pookie. Somebody said pookie dookie. No, polka. You'll get it when it comes out. Polka. No specifics on that. Polka. You guys will understand. There's only one thing that matches polka. Starts with a D. Three different types will sweep the lands. Folks, I'll be back in a minute. Robin said break, and I'll be right back. We'll go right into Revelation. We will. Go into Revelation. Read the homepage about Friday's talk to please do that we're going a bit further than what we're doing we're going to have kiosks and operations and things set up and so we need to start those processes right away we do also you guys listen to me carefully i was told the other day churches churches have a legitimate threat against them okay so you guys who are have a brick and mortar or you know somebody who has a brick and mortar you may want to take that under advisement right Always keep that in prayer. But the threat is not a joke. It's not. And unfortunately, we're in those times where these threats take effect. There have been churches who have had shootouts in them. And those shootouts have been quite effective. Well, let's just say somebody came in there and opened fire. They did not report some of your smaller incidences like that. They did some of the bigger mega places, but... They don't want to report all of them. That would give everybody a scare. Secondly, there's a lot of chatter within the USA. Lots of chatter. I want you guys to be extra vigilant concerning who you discuss politics with. Can you do that, please? Be extra careful. There are people out there that are ready to go all the way. You know what I'm talking about. 
And every single day, every day, there's a buildup of this uh, resentment, right? And sooner or later, you know what's going to happen. So be very vigilant in who you discuss politics with because you could set them over the edge because you could influence them to do the unbelievable. You'll think you're talking to somebody who has control over their mental faculties, only to find out they don't. So discern, right? Be very sensitive to the Lord's guidance in that, please. I'm saying that because about six or seven people have fallen prey to that. You have an innocent conversation with somebody about politics, and next thing you know, they have harmed or killed someone. And then they're coming to get you. Because you incited the entire thing through your conversation. I don't want to see you guys fall for that. I don't want to see you guys who talk to other people fall for that. And if you think it cannot happen to anybody on YouTube, for example, you're wrong. They will be the next examples that somebody violence with a group of people. And they're going to blame it on somebody on the Internet. So be do what the Lord instructed us to do. Be holy in all manner of communication. Take the Lord's position when you're talking about politics, right? And if you cannot talk about politics without venting or expressing your strong beliefs, don't have that conversation. Don't do that. Be vigilant. We live in times where people will, they will go through some things. We know in times past that innocent people were locked up for holy conversations, how much more will they do that to folks who live in this day and age? It's happening. It's building up too. It's building up. Well, we all die. I know you guys don't want to hear this, but Iran and Russia will take full advantage. We'll have to have a discussion in an off-off time, not scheduled. I found something out about our 7 p.m. talks. I did. I have to be a little more responsible too. I do. Anyway. I'll be right back in a few minutes right here at COT, everybody. Yeah. I want you guys to be careful. Oh, somebody said no talk about politics or religion. No, just be careful of who you are, uh, who you openly conversate with, right? You don't want to share the wrong thing with somebody you really don't know. Somebody who can take what you say and twist it and do something by it and then point it back to you. So in that respect, right? Because, hey, we live in a time where the Lord said people are going to turn against each other, correct? People are going to turn people in. Now, what type of environment could a child turn a parent in on? Anybody, what type of environment would that require for a child to turn a parent in and that parent be jailed? Anybody know? What type of environment? I know it's something nobody wants to see. So let me, let me give you a small hint, right? Small hint for those of you still here, small hint. Because of politics, hear me on this, because of politics, because it is so divisive, you're going to start to see major changes, right? After the death, a death will take place. You're going to see major changes in politics. If a person appears to be on the opposite side of whatever that nation is, they're going to find themselves under a brand new category of terrorists. And when that happens, right, it's going to begin by rhetoric. When that happens, they're going to be put in a brand new category of criminal. That's what's going to happen. Okay? You see how divisive politics is right now. You see how divided what something has happened between the Democratic and Republican sides of things. Both exist for checks and balances. Both are supposed to have one voice when it comes to the people, but they have different ideologies for balance. It's supposed to work, right? For example, if I'm talking, I make a decision in COT, but I get no input from anybody. I'm calling all the shots, right? That's called a dictatorship. But if I have a second or third, I can bring that idea up to them. They can, get their, they can give me their best input, and then collectively we come up with something having gone over the pros and cons for the sake of the people, for the sake of you. That's how it runs. Not one person making all the decisions, right? Because when that happens, listen, when one person can make all the decisions in any organization, that one person 
where we're going to hide dirt. It encourages dirt. It's what it does. It encourages a lot of dirt. Please remember that about COT so that when folks are running COT, always encourage them to have a second. Any organization that does that. And there are a lot of organizations out there where one person has dictated all the moves and it causes a lot of dirt. Right? Dirt. In this case, in this country, you guys are so important, those of you who believe in Christ, you're so important that if you do not involve yourselves, I personally do not see our democratic system going any further. I do not. I see an absolute and total breakdown of democracy itself. And it's going to have to be somewhat militarized to survive or won't survive. See, because right now, let's say everybody went to go vote and the wrong person is elected. The people are going to say they cheated. It doesn't matter what side, that's what they're going to say. Both sides have a narrative. See, if a Democrat wins, they're going to say the Republicans will say they cheated. And if a Republican wins, the Democrats will say they were intimidated. Some weird something will come out. You have other countries capitalizing. They're watching this election. And based on this election, you better believe a war is going to break out. You better believe it. Based on who the people pick... Nations are going to make their move. They're getting ready for that right now. The Ukraine, for example. Nobody wants to support the Ukraine. Well, let's put it this way. The Republicans say no, no support for the Ukraine. That's what they're saying. And the Democrats say yes. Right? Now, the people, it, the funny thing, here's the funny thing. People think, on, on out here, you guys, you think that the Ukraine needs support and Russia does not. Now, some, something has happened, something odd and weird has happened, because now the Republican side of the government does not believe the Ukraine needs support when they did. And so they're going to not have that funding go forward. Something has happened. I'll tell you what I think. I think there are a small group of people who do not belong in the White House at all. They don't belong in our government, and they're causing issues like this to happen. We can't continue to support external folks where our own people are starving. We know that. We know that. But I'll tell you something. Uh, almost a genocide is about to take place. Some pretty terrible weapons. And China is building up like never before. Do you guys know that we're having military drills just for China? The Air Force must be ready for China. Brand new methods SOP regulations and everything else are being based on China. There's a joint operations training task force involved that will do something nobody has ever done before because of China. Because China, as it happens to be our number one editor, a big question mark. What on the internet does not reflect what China is? It does not reflect it. And what China has made and what they've been unveiling is it should be an outrage, right? Should be an outrage. The story is going to get out sooner or later. And when you guys find out, the technical advances of China is going to frighten you. It will frighten you. Lord have mercy. Somebody said hypersonics. I, you know, that would be nice. If, if all they had were hypersonics, that would be great. The only thing that can intercept a hypersonic, of course, is a laser, of which we have some pretty powerful ones in space and on land. But that's not the case. It's not the case. They are into the spooky sciences, and CERN is doing its best to catch up. The problem is that's an international co-op. And so no one nation is going to own CERN. They did that on purpose. And so you've got all these nations who are getting input from CERN, right? It's supposed to be benign, and they stay away from military projects, but we all know that any big breakthrough is always militarized. Right? We all know that. So, we have some problems. We do. Somebody said the sun is in control of our destiny, not man. The sun is in the, is that the you know, solar sun? It won't be there either. God has already made his uh, declarations. He already did. He already made his declarations, didn't he? Every, he said, all the idols of all lands are going to be torn down. What does that tell you? that all nations are going to be in a type of ruin. That includes us. We all know in America, we have idols for everything. We have statues for everything. We do. 
We have iconography for everything. And the Lord's going to take it all down. When he said, don't make yourself an engraving the image of anything above the heavens, beneath the, or, or above the earth, beneath the earth, or in the earth. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God, visiting the iniquities upon the father, the children, the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy to the thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. When he said that, he was talking about any of this stuff, all this stuff that we have is in defiance of the Ten Commandments. And then they stuck Apollo right in the capital of every single government that's on the western side and another entity on the other side. Isn't that crazy? No, Lou Daddy. First of all, listen, God is spirit, right? Spirits don't have a voice as we understand it, right? A, a voice anyway is just a set of vibrations. It's all the voices. No, they didn't capture his voice like that. Though. They didn't capture that. The only ones that would do something that weird would be one of the fallen angels. They always attempt to emulate something holy to get you. But which brings me to this. You ready? The fallen angels and Satan, their entire modus operandi is to get you to turn away from the righteousness of the Most High. That's what they want you to turn away. They want you not to believe the way Jesus said to believe. In fact, they are in direct opposition to Christ Jesus. Jesus is the most dangerous dangerous word against them, right? They fight him tooth and nail at every turn. They do that. In the world, they have sown seeds according to the book of Revelation, according to the New Testament, according to parts of the Old Testament, they have infiltrated this world. They influence mankind. They are the darkness within folks, right? And they seek to tear down the Messiah. They do everything against the Messiah. Everything. Their influence and everything they teach is against Messiah. Pharmaceuticals, for example. Pharmaceuticals will have you wrestle with certain spirits. Right? Do you know that? Anybody ever, who, who out there has stopped, who smoked and stopped smoking? How many out there smoked at one point, but you stopped smoking? You don't smoke anymore. How many? <clears throat> and when you stopped smoking, you noticed there was a mental change. When you don't smoke, there's a mental change versus when you do smoke. When you do smoke, you have a mindset change almost instantly. How many have noticed that? Because spirits will always go along with whatever the world pushes the most. Nothing the world ever pushes is benign. Nothing. It's always going to be connected to something. The music that's being pumped out and cranked out and everything else. But hundreds of people have come out and said that these guys have ceremonies and they assign a demon to every copy of every song that goes out so that when you hear that song, a demon is attached to it. But most people don't, they, they haven't gotten the, the operation of a demonic entity yet. They are attached to what people call emotions. I, listen, I no longer believe emotions are what man has classified them to be not it's important that all of you have emotions do you know that it's important but it can easily be corrupted there are there's a technology directly associated with emotions you guys know that a technology and do you know why based upon how you feel right your resonance in the body changes do you know that now it is not the way that most people think there's a real technology behind this there's also a real technology that will impede your emotions, will alter your emotions very easily. Well, when they impede that, and they did that by instruction, right? Alistair Crowley, he's behind a lot of this stuff. Him and the Mr. Rocket Man, Von Braun, don't like that guy. His motives were all messed up. He was devoted to something else. He went through his ceremony, gave his blood, mixed it with some other folks in Germany, and he was stuck forever. So you can't trust what he, he can, they can smile all day. They bounce something behind whatever they do. When your emotions are positive, think about this, when they're positive, right? These gurus out there will say, you know, when you're positive, you attract positive things. You can manifest this, manifest that, right? If that's the case, then why pray in the first place? So we know that's not quite true, right? I have felt positive. I felt real positive one time, absolutely positive one time, and my parachute did not open at 300 feet, and I fell right into some trees. I was positive. I don't have fear, you know, when I'm doing stuff. I didn't have fear. 
I was positive. I said, we have this. No fear whatsoever. Positive. Loving guy. Shoot folded. 300 feet. What happened to that? That was a bad manifestation because it has nothing to do with that. There have been times when I have absolutely have been doubting a situation and nothing but goodness came. So I have to disagree with all that. Mind you, I have to disagree with all that. When you are positive, when you're positive, guess what you're doing? Anybody? You're looking for positive things. Whatever you feel, you're going to start seeing. Do you know that? Whatever you feel, you're going to see. You know why? Because whatever you feel, you're looking for. And whatever you're looking for, you're going to start feeling. Do you hear me? If you're looking for somebody to come in and rob you, you're going to get nervous. And when you're nervous, you're going to be looking for somebody, right? Now, all the while, when you're looking for somebody to come and get you, you're also authorizing, listen to me, because God gave you authority. You have authority. Human beings have authority on the earth. Natural, God-given authority on the earth. So when you're sitting there looking for a thief to come in, you're saying to yourself, I know a thief's going to break in here. Say, so i got to get ready for this. What are you doing? What are you doing? You're not manifesting anything. You're asking everything out there that's a thief to come to you. Now, it may not happen the first night, second night, third night, but you're going to, what are you doing? You're authorizing the very thing you're looking for to come your way. You're authorizing it. Don't think of manifestation because everything is already, listen, what's yours is yours and nobody can take it away from you. You don't need to manifest anything. It's already yours. But you can authorize something to be, to do something. Or you can stop authorization from something doing something. Now, when you're negative and you start looking for negative things, you're going to find negative stuff because you're looking for it. You're authorizing it. You're saying, come on, come on. That's what you're saying. Come on. What happens to a person who's scared to death that somebody's going to break into their house and they're saying, Lord, don't let anything break into the house, but they're scared to death. What happens? Is somebody going to break into the house? No. Even though they feel that way, no. They made a request at most high. So you can be scared to death and nothing will take place. If that were the case, all of us would be dead. Many of us were hopeless. We should have been dead. Many of us were scared to death of just about everything. We should have been dead. Should have been dead. But we're not dead. We're not. Because the Lord intervenes. You gave something no authorization. You don't act on fear. When you act on fear, guess what you start doing? You start preparing for something to come your way. And you there you go again looking for it. Authorizing it to come right in your direction. You can authorize things because you have authority in the earth. The Lord already told you that. God already told you that. He gave you dominion. You have authority of things already. That's why a bad person can get good things. Not because they manifest it. No, no, no. Because either they stole it, number one, but it's not a good thing, or or that's what they're looking for. That's what they're truly looking for. When you look for something like that, you're authorizing it. You're authorizing everything in that thing to operate. It does not guarantee it's going to arrive. It does not. Now, when you're aligned with Christ and you're worried, you have a concern about the gospel, concern about people, you have aligned yourself with the living God, there's nothing you can ask for that will be denied. Do you know why? Because your desires have changed. That's why. Your desires have changed. And that means everything. When your desires change, you align with the kingdom and nothing will be withheld from you. Nothing. Because you won't ask for everything either. I'm going to ask for everything. I don't like spiders, and I haven't seen one. I'm not going to see one. I do not like spiders. I don't, guys. I'll just tell you that right now. If I were pulled before an enemy, they could torment, torture me, and do all sorts of stuff. I'm not saying a word. You, they bring out one spider. I'm telling everything. I don't like spiders. I really don't. Serpents, no big deal. Other bugs, except stink bugs, no big deal. Spiders, I don't know what it is. I don't like them. The bigger they are, the less... Yeah, they don't look spooky. It's them little tiny ones that scurry around corners. You can't tell where they went. That's a problem for me. It is. I don't like spiders. All right, guys, let's jump into Revelation. I just want to say that real quick. Plus, we're not on anybody's time thing here, are we? Hold on just a second. Just a moment. I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready to. I'm really ready to go to this. I got to fire some things up here. Oh, we'll have a little get-together. 
sometime on Friday, guys. Friday. For COT. Updates and things of that nature. Revelation. Revelation. We went into Revelation 14. We were talking about the harvest of the earth. Right? Harvest of the earth. Do you guys still remember this one? No. Let me get. Let me not jump ahead of myself. We also went over the seven angels with the seven plagues. Does anybody understand the words of Christ dealing with these these plagues and why they come up on the earth, these vials of wrath and when they come up on the earth and why Jesus said you're not going to be there? Does, does anybody not understand that? Everybody should have an understanding of that. That seems to be a point of trouble for a lot of people, right? Which is why I'm, I'm, the notes are going to be important. They'll be important because they will outline things that the Lord said. Okay. And we know who's speaking here to John, right? We know who's speaking here, but there are things that are being said that we need to have an understanding of. For example, the seven angels having the, the uh, seven plagues, right? They're filled up with the wrath of God. Does anybody know what Jesus said? What the New Testament says concerning the wrath of God and what the wrath of God is actually for? Anybody? Because we just read right before this, before the seven angels were to pour anything out, something had to happen. You remember that? Something had to take place. What was it? So we know that's in, that's in a sequential type order. Before these seven last plagues came out, something else had to happen. And it dealt with the harvest. It dealt with the harvest. It dealt with the saints. He, because it, the Bible says, Satan showed Jesus all the kingdoms in a moment of time. And Satan said, all these kingdoms are mine. And I can give them to whom I will. And if you bow down and worship me, I'll give them to you. You cannot lie to the Son of God. You cannot tempt the Son of God with a lie. He was telling the truth. Because that's echoed by the prophets. That the kingdoms of this earth were given over for a time. Right? Now, that's a problem. there. That means... Is there a holy kingdom on this earth right now? Or is something wrong with all of them? Do you know how many people run around in their minds and they really do believe that for some reason, the respective nation they're from, their kingdom is holy? It is not till later on in the word of God that an angel stands and declares that the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord. Before that time, they are not of the Lord. The Lord said they're not claimed, they're, they're not his yet, Right? So guess what they are? Part of that beast kingdom. But there's an issue here. There's an issue. Here's what I want you to see. The beast, you guys said, was evil, right? The beast. But there's a woman that sits atop the beast. Is she evil or good? Because the beast hates her. Uh-oh. The beast hates that woman that has mystery Babylon written across her forehead. Now, don't you find that strange? How can the beast, these kingdoms of Satan, have a, have a nation or, or something like that that it hates? The evil kingdoms of the earth hate this woman that has mystery Babylon across her forehead. Uh-oh. The beast hates her. The beast hates her. The beast hates her. It does not love her. It hates her. It hates her. See, there's something wrong there in it. There's something wrong. My goodness, see, we're going to have to crack open Jeremiah so that people get that rightful perspective of something God declared, which is called his indignation. It is for a specific thing in a specific gap of time, for a specific place, to do a specific thing. It has a specific outcome, right? We have to find. Now, she has mystery Babylon written on her forehead. She is the mother of harlots, the mother of harlots. That is further clarified in the Old Testament, perfectly clarified. It's just not read often. It really is not read often, right? So I'm going to read it first before I open my big choppers because I have foot and mouth disease, and it can be easily contested by anybody without the foundation of those scriptures in context. But she's a great mother of harlots. Now, if she's the mother of harlots, she is the first harlot. She is the very first harlot. Right? Now, a harlot, that's a title and a half. 
That's the title and a half. God named the place Daughter. In fact, we were going to read something the other day, and I did not read it. I was going to read it. The Lord said, don't read it. Do not read it. I didn't read it. I didn't read it. Because it outlines everything you need to know. It'll start you on a journey that you never saw before, and you'll say, my goodness gracious, we're, but I, but this is in every Bible? That's what probably most people say. That's what they say when they come across that. But let me give you a hint about something. Does the Lord love you? Those of you who gave your life to Christ, does the Lord love you? Yes or no? You know what the Bible says? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe within him will not perish but have everlasting life. So he does love you. But there is an issue. There's an issue. Were you children of his blessing or children of wrath? Which ones were you before you were saved? Which ones were you? Before you came to the knowledge of the truth, were you a child appointed to his wrath? The Bible says you were. You were children of wrath. You obeyed the prince of the power of the air. You were children of rebellion. You were children of wrath. And when you came to the knowledge of the truth, that's when it changed. So to be a child of wrath who deserves wrath, is to have separation with the living God. That's to have separation, right? No redemption. So if you're not, if you don't have redemption, you're a child of wrath. When you follow the ways of Satan and you seek to follow nothing else, you're a child of wrath. When you're deceived or walk in ignorance, you're a child of wrath. And you're appointed to his wrath. But when Christ came into your life, right? And you accepted what God had you to understand because God allowed you to understand what his death was. God allowed you to understand what his resurrection was. God allowed you to understand this. So you didn't do it. He did. You became children of hope and of a promise and of the victory. See that change? So at one point you were children of wrath when you did not know salvation. Man, it all changed. See how that works? So if you don't know the Messiah, you're a child of wrath. All those people out there that do not know the Messiah, they are children of wrath. That's why we have a job to do. So if they're children of wrath, they deserve what? They're appointed to God's wrath, and death will come for them. So what is the process by which we are cleaned up? What is the process? Anybody know? How did you come to know the Lord? How did you come to know him? Did not, didn't something in your life, your adversary got very close to you, didn't he? Your adversary did. Started ripping your life to pieces. Your life started going down the tubes in, in some way or fashion. It was going down emotionally, by way of structure, or something happened. And your life began to decrease, started to fall apart, right? And then Jesus was your cry, it was your last, everything else failed. And you said, Lord, you're the only one that can help me in this. You're the only one. I'm all messed up. Because if God did not allow us to go through something, how could we ever reach a point to be so humble as to cry out to him? Something took place. Something got us, right? Something woke us up. And he orchestrated those events so that we would finally pay attention to him. He set up an appointment. But I'm telling you now that your life took a turn you didn't expect, right? So he imposed something upon us. Because if something happens to you, because you've been marked for salvation, you better believe your father has everything to do with it. So he orchestrated your call coming to him. He orchestrated those events. He allowed those things to happen, didn't he? He allowed those things to happen to wake you up. He knows what it takes to wake us up, right? Anything God has salvation for, he knows how to wake it up. Sometimes it's awful. Trust me when I tell you this. It's sometimes it's awful. Sometimes it's not so awful. Whatever it takes to wake you up. God knows how to wake up the redeemed. But before you were redeemed, you were appointed to what? An eternal death. You were children of wrath, children of disobedience. You were on the wrong side of the list. So who else that belongs to the living God does not believe? They don't believe yet. 
Who is that? They have not said, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Who is like that on earth? Who's like that? There is a place like that, full of people. And they have not said, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So then listen to me carefully. They have a state. They have a status, right? A state of being. And part of that state of being, as God described it, was a daughter of Babylon, a harlot. He said he would have given them a letter of divorce, but they went a-whoring. That's what he said. They went out there and, and committed adultery all round about them. They mingled the ways of the living God with what they shouldn't have. God said, but I'm not going to destroy you. I'm not doing that because I called you just like he called us. God didn't destroy us. Did he? he could have. He said, you here. I remember one time somebody in COT was talking. I told this gentleman by the Holy Spirit. I said, listen, Seth, you do not have to pretend to be anybody. And that person that day had a small victory because he could be himself. That person didn't know they could be themselves. All too often, people try to be something in the Lord, even in settings like this. You're totally accepted for who you are. Totally. Totally. Remember that. Totally accepted. In fact, who you are is who is loved. Who you are. God knows who he sent here. He will not liberate a stranger. He's going to liberate his children, not a stranger. Remember that. It is Satan who demanded you become something you're not. Satan did that. God loves you for who you are. God knows exactly who he sent you. And when you stand up 100% yourself, guess what? That's when you'll have 100% deliverance. God will not deliver some man-made character. He's not going to do that. He's not. Do you guys get that? Do you get that? Because growing up in this world, all of us have put on a strange cloak to survive among so many in the world. God's not going to deliver what we have created. God will deliver who he sent here. The real you. Because the real you is beautiful, fearfully and wonderfully made. That's the real you. There's a story about us in the Bible, how we hid ourselves away. Because of hard times. That could be a pressure. Acceptance in your families. Among your peers. You hid that person away. Sooner or later that person's going to come forward. That's the person the Lord favors. That's the person who has favor. Not the one in strange garments. But the one God sent here. The real you. That is the one that shall be delivered. Remember that. Please remember that. Okay, I'm going to take a break, and guess what? I'm still coming back. I'll be right back in a few minutes right here at COT. As soon as I find the, there we go. Okay, everybody, I'm back, unfortunately. I am back, I'm back. Okay, how many of you guys know about the, what is it called? The, uh, help me out. The, how many of you guys know about the, uh, I'm trying to find it. What was it? The phylacrates? Something to that nature. Has to do with the, uh, do you guys remember the little boxes? that the Jews were, uh, put on their heads. You guys remember that? You know what those are? They Actually, they still wear that to this day. It was a cloth also that used to go on the forehead, which shows your intent. Anything on the forehead, right, shows your intent. There's a history pertaining to that, and but there were things written on there. Written, right, just like back in the, uh, back in the day, the Pharisees, of course, when they were, when they were trying to alter Mosaic law, things of that nature, kind of confusing, but some things happened. Language was altered, right? And so the Babylon on the forehead of anybody would show the intent of something, right? Which is why in Jeremiah, sent out Jeremiah in, in three and some other chapters, it was talking about Israel having a whore's forehead, and she refused to change her ways. She didn't want to change her ways. Again, we're talking about the separation of the fallen side of someone versus the redemptive side of someone, right? A mark in the forehead also, it, it really deals with the intent. 
right? There were sayings in Hebrew, in Hebrew times that came from that. Uh, the frontlet of the eyes, the forehead, same thing. And so in this case, in this case, the beast hates, cannot stand the woman. Doesn't like the woman. So you have to ask yourself, this woman is different from the beast, not part of the beast, right? Now, it also says mystery Babylon, not Babylon, mystery Babylon, not Babylon, mystery Babylon on the forehead, right? Mystery. That means a hidden place, something you wouldn't suspect, something you wouldn't really look at, something you wouldn't count on, something you wouldn't equate anything to, right? Now, it is to really look at this as an old and redemptive place changes everything, right? It changes. Somebody said, Teflon, no, not that, the other one, the other one, not that, the other one. It's, it was in, some of them do the same thing today, but it was something different I'm talking about. But in the separation, when you're, when you're talking about a separation of something, the old and the new, we certainly see that with Israel. Now, it does not call her Babylon, right? It just references that on her forehead is Mystery Babylon and that she will be attacked by the beast. The beast has a desire to burn her flesh, right? To burn her flesh. And in this case, the beast can't stand her. So be, in this case, I would say she finds herself in the middle of a beast, not that she is part of it. I think the iconography of some of the picture, pictures have that wrong, where they have a woman with a sword and she's, she's commanding the beast. She's not commanding the beast. She's caught in the middle of it. She's surrounded by the beast. The beast is round about her. And in Revelation, we're about to go into the part where it actually starts to explain these things. He'll explain it. And in fact, it's going to get very interesting. It gets very, very interesting. It really does. Right after the, these angels have their plagues, the seven bowls uh, of wrath come out, right? The prostitute is what it refers to because that's what it is. And the beast, it gives an interpretation of the whole thing. We're just going to be a little different, We're just cushioning the blow of this, right? It's an old state of something, but the new state of something, just like us, just like us, right? Just like us. Because we have an old man and a new man. So that means the promise is intact. See, our promise of salvation is not for the old man of us. The old person of me, that's not who salvation is for. That person is condemned. That person is purely of the flesh and condemned. Right? The born-again spirit vessel of me is redemptive, which is spiritual. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. It cannot. So... That changes, that changes quite a bit. There's no real confusion in that, especially when you go over Jeremiah. Jeremiah, where this was established, right? The indignation of the living God was established in the book of Jeremiah. And the time of the indignation, that three and a half years, was also established in the book of Jeremiah. And God told us he would not repent of it, that it would take place. And so we see Jerusalem trampled underfoot three and a half years. So she's only in that state for three and a half years. And then she becomes a cup of trembling. Before that, the nations got her. They ravaged everything. They burnt up everything, took everything, right? But then she becomes a cup of trembling after that period of indignation. And then anybody who set their hearts against Israel, God will deal with directly, right? It'd be better for them if they were never a nation. At that time, also, Babylon is uh, kaput. So this, in Jeremiah, we'll go over this too, the daughter of Babylon, that name was given because Israel was exiled into Babylon. And you guys know what happened, don't you? Their exile into Babylon became a burden unto the Lord because they were sent there for correction. But what they ended up doing was picking up ways of Babylon, and they bought it back. There were only a few in Babylon who couldn't wait to get out of that place who prayed every single day, but other people prospered in Babylon. We read that in COT the one time, and people's mouths opened up, their jaw drops, right? Because they didn't really look into the exile into Babylon. And it became a burden unto the Lord that they went there in the first place. He meant that for correction. 
He does not control people, so they ended up doing something totally different, and they prospered in Babylon. And they also perverted. He said they perverted his. That's why he said, I can't stand your feast days and all this other stuff. He couldn't stand it because they had actually mingled those things with all these external things. So what they brought back was impure, and they've been blind ever since. But God will restore everything about them after the indignation is complete. That's why he gave the ten kings who have received no power as of yet, but will one hour with the beast, will give their power unto the beast, that the, because of the, for the will of God to be finished. So he does that for his own will, right? Because the indignation must happen. That was his method of correction. That's the only method of correction that will correct them. Then when they can see again, they'll recognize everything. And it, but at that point, all the ones who were grafted into the branch will be accounted for, and it's all over. You're, we see this process happening, and this process is happening all around us. It is. It's happening everywhere, right? Happening everywhere. So it's a, one of those beautiful things. Somebody says, is that where they got Star of David? Oh, boy, that's a can of worms. It's a can of worms. The Star Rim fan, their God, I believe, what was put, right? They made unto themselves a symbol that God did not approve. Anyway, everybody has made to themselves some sort of, God does not like flags. He, he made that obvious, right? That's kind of obvious. These representations and things that we make unto ourselves, we were never supposed to do, but we did so anyway. Doesn't make it okay with the living God. He still has his standards. We're the ones that dropped all the standards. And we truly live in a backwards type world where people try to excuse certain things because of patriotism, because of other things, right? Truth is, it is wrong. And it will be dealt with. It will. And that's where we are. I can't compromise on those things. I know that people have because they don't want to sound like, uh, they don't want to sound like Stalin in the middle of the USA, right? Because it sounds bad if you say, you know, all this engraving stuff we shouldn't have. But the truth is, we shouldn't have had it. But we did so anyway. Lots of corrections are coming down. Lots. It's good to understand Revelation because when these things really take their toll, people are not going to understand. They don't understand now why people die. They don't. They'll say, I don't know why God would take this one and not that one and do this and not that. Because God's processes, right, they are continuous. And just because we change and forget and accommodate and, and pervert and do all these different things to his word does not mean his word's going to change. It's not what it means, right? So we have some growth to be had. We do. And as we go further into Revelation, it's going to get a little more controversial. It will. I'm just letting you know that now. It's going to be a little more controversial. Somebody said, Mike, you were referring to the Tiffin? No. The, somebody wrote that out there. They wrote the word I was trying to say that I was uh, trying to get at. It's, it's the two small black leather boxes. It, it contains the Torah verses, I believe, on parchment. Jewish men have them. Orthodox uh, Judaism. That one has a long-standing history. I believe it, it comes from the Hebrew word. Uh, tef- yeah, there we go. It comes from that Hebrew word. But it comes from that Hebrew word. Believe it or not, in history, that is different from what they have today, right? Teflon is a, that's a, it's a Hebrew word, which was very specific. That was very specific. This is derived from that, but it's not exactly that. Not according to, uh, not according to all what they have. All that stuff is not redeemable. And God will redeem Israel. Right. Although people say, you know, they don't, they don't accept God and this, or, or accept Christ and that and the other. But God knows that. He blinded them just for a season, so that we could be grafted in, so that we could be grafted in, and He will return sight to them. And when that happens, it's all over. Which means, here's what I want to bring up. You ready for all of you who stuck around this one? I want to bring up before that happens, before the trampling of Jerusalem underfoot. There are some things that must happen in the earth, which means things are going to have to start changing now, which they are, right? 
the one scripture where it says men's hearts are failing them for fear for looking after those things which are coming upon the earth. It also said that same context, nations in distress with perplexity, the seas and the waves roaring. Now, why would that be put in there? The seas and the ro waves roaring. I'll tell you something. It is estimated the wind speeds of the oceans are going to increase by, a, by almost by a factor this time. Hail is going to be much larger than normal because of faster, lower altitude wind. The jet stream is going to have a heat driver from fires that can be very difficult to deal with, right? Which will exacerbate or that will increase or extinguish, I should say, uh, some of the forces that will be involved. They're having to come up with new names for hurricanes of higher winds and higher vortices, right? Different altitudes. We're going to have brand new water anomalies that take place. And this does not include some very real UFO stuff. Not talking about the fake UFO stuff, the very real UFO stuff. And just so you're clear on this, my brief, I'm sorry, my belief in UFOs is that they are fallen angels. They are Nephilim and the fallen angels, which means some are flesh, some are not. Some of the craft that you see are not physical. They're not. Some are. But there are other things you're going to have to deal with. I can only say it is said. It is said more than a dozen times. Very large figures have been captured coming out of mountains and going back in them where there is no door. These are top-down views. These are photographs, high-definition photographs that were taken. You're talking about hundreds of photographs if not thousands of photographs taken to, to represent about 10 to 20 seconds of time, they would come out and look, survey, and go right back in again. Some did not go back in. Some would go to the basis of these mountains and they would enter into the sea or enter into the lands where they were near. They would go through solid rock. Now, these were being captured. It, it is said these were captured by satellite. It is also said that very different people with anomalistic abilities have been seen doing some very strange things. For example, this would get you. What if you were on a cruise ship and you saw about three or four people running on the ocean? I know it doesn't make sense. But can you imagine seeing that? And let's just say that these three or four people were at least 15 feet tall. At least 15 feet tall. That makes no sense either. Let's also say that the top side of what some say is an arc was seen in a few places, top down, in 20 miles in radius. An arc, the top of it coming right out of the earth. Strange, weird things are happening, right? It is said that the Chinese picked up a brand new island chain that does not exist. It is said that the U.S. then picked it up also and verified what the Chinese had because they thought it was a problem, an issue. They were going to exploit it. But it wasn't real, but it was picked up on satellites. It is said, you know, it could have happened. So weird things like this are happening. It's only a matter of time before it happens right in your backyard, right in your neighborhood. You know, it is said. But there is a probably, you know, a, a 90 per chance in the next two months, all of you will see something anomalistic. It is said. And at that point, people are going to ask more questions, which brings up something else. How do you introduce, if you were a government, how would you introduce what you actually know? My simple answer is you can't. You can't. But we know in the Bible Somebody showed something because it says when they behold the beast that was and is not, is not and yet is, they're going to wonder whose names were not written in the book of life and the foundation of the world, which means people are going to see something. And when they see it, it's going to make them doubt that they're human beings. They're going to actually see it. And they're going to wonder who was never part of the human gene pool. They're going to wonder, am I from that? Is that my origin? Or my human being? 
They're going to wonder, is there any other way that a person can wonder if their names were never, ever in the book of life? If your name is never, ever in the book of life, then you're not within that lineage of the living God. And so you must come from a different source. And they're going to wonder whose names were never in the book of life from the foundation of the world. For somebody to wonder that after they see something, that's kind of obvious. That's somewhat obvious. Can these governments produce something like that? It is said, you better believe it. Will a person question their origins if they see it? The rumor is, yes, they will. Absolutely. So hopefully everybody's faith is where it should be. And you're not wondering things already. Hopefully. Because there will come a time, listen, what if a time comes where you go outside and you have to get used to seeing things parked in the sky for four months? No contact, no anything. You're just seeing things parked in the sky in the same spot for four months, day after day, night after night. And nobody knows what happens after that four months is over with. You think that will answer people's questions? No, it will not. You know what it's going to do? Huh? It's going to cause a big portion of this earth to start worshiping those things. A lot of conspiracy theories are going to, they're going to say is blue beam, is the government, is this, is that. Until they start taking people. And when I say take them, I mean in the worst way. I'm not talking about take them up in the ships and fly away. No. If you have no spiritual covering, you'll have no protection. See, I have this belief. And since you guys hung around, here's the belief. I have no choice but to believe in spiritual things. I have no choice. So my mind does not wonder if they're from planet lasagna or not. I see them as ancient things that go dormant from time to time. That's what I see. The faith of many believers begins to wane. They have more places to operate in. I believe ancient things they help mankind out with. Did you ever notice that those religions or those people who had no relationship with Yahshua HaMashiach, who had no relationship with the living God, they were the ones responsible for all these megalithic, buildings and things and pyramids as you notice that those who worshiped different gods always built the big structures did you notice that i do not believe technology was involved in fact i'm highly convinced it was not involved but it was simply a spiritual ability people today get paid a lot of money on like ancient aliens to to constantly drill in somebody's mind that technology was used how foolish, how foolish, how foolish. As I said before, I have no choice but to believe in spiritual things, which means I also believe in spiritual abilities. I have no choice but to believe in them. If Jesus walking on water, he didn't pull out his bracelet, tap a button and a bridge came under his feet or something like that. Lazarus being raised from the dead, right? There was no special gas that made him, you know, seem like he was dead for a certain amount of days and then he rose up and walked again. I don't believe in that. I believe in spiritual abilities, spiritual giftings. Spiritual gifting like that, there's no stone that's going to be an obstacle. One of these fallen angels, based on their rank, could command certain elements to do certain things. I believe in those spiritual abilities. Not so much the technology part. Those fallen angels who are stripped of all things, and those Nephilim who came from women, who may still be around, they have no choice but to build technology, to scoot around. They don't have any divine powers. They're incredibly smart. They may have gifts of manipulation, discernment, things of that nature. But they will require some type of technology. They will. I also believe that there are the abominable races in the earth, too. Things that uh, God will not allow to come topside yet. But as the restrainer is in less and less places, Evil will come forward. When the Antichrist comes forward, he's not going to be by himself. He who, it, it, you know, in the Bible is very specific. He who now less will continue until he be taken out of the way. Then that wicked is going to be revealed. So something is obscuring what true evil is. And when that is taken out of the way, not only will that man of perdition come forward, so will the rest of the evil. And at that point, because people's minds are going to be like mush and jello, which means easily 
their minds are going to be changed to another narrative. Many things will come forward. Many. Many people who are possessed will operate in their possessed state. They'll not go back to normal. There are many like that now who are marked for activation, you could say. Meaning, they have toyed around and toyed around and they do not believe in the living God and have a pact with evil. They did so by foolishness. But fully knowing about Christ, they rejected him, given over to a reprobate mind, and now something else will control them. When they rise all throughout the earth, they'll do a great many physical things. See, a spirit can't do anything to you. But that spirit, if it could possess somebody, then it could do something to you. Some of you out there were touched by a human being who was highly influenced by a spiritual entity in your youth, and that's why they did what they did. Have you ever noticed that most criminals, after they do the deed, you say, why did you do so-and-so? I don't know. And if they're fully taken over, they justify their evil deeds. Hmm? But I also believe that Jesus armed all of us with the truth. That if you would stand up in line with Christ, you'll have no limitations on your spiritual authority and you cannot be touched, though you will exercise all authority over them. Do you know that right now, for those of you who believe in Christ, Jesus has given you all power over the enemy. Not some power, all power over the enemy. Do you know that right now you have the power to tread upon scorpions and serpents? But listen, here's the key. you got to be on your feet to tread them down, right? You cannot give up nor be in a state where you have given up. That's what Jesus said do not do. He said don't give up. Satan will make you think you should give up. Don't listen to him. See, right now it's a matter of whose report you're going to believe. You're going to believe Satan's report? You're defeated? You have no hope? You're going to believe your father's report through Christ, who says you're more than conquered. Somebody said Egyptians, Anunnaki from the planet X. When the fallen angels were, are disbanded, when they fell with Lucifer, keep this in mind, when they one-third of the angels fell with Lucifer, right? He drew one-third of the stars with him. Only 200 fell on Mount Hermon. Those 200 took unto themselves what? Wives, they mated with him, and they had Nephilim all over the earth, which grew in number and consumed the acquisitions of men. But that was only 200 that fell on Mount Hermon. Not all of the fallen angels mated with women. Only 200 of the chiefs of 10 fell on Mount Hermon. That leaves a big number out there, out there. Now, because they were booted out of heaven, they're all over the place, all over the place. One day when the moon when we really find out what it is, when it will unmask itself, and nobody will have a question about what the moon is, and all these empty theories will go away, right? Because people operate by theory. They believe or not based on theory. When that happens, it's going to cause a lot of fear. When the secondary orb, I'm going to call it an orb, I heard, which is already visible in certain parts of the Earth, but because of its changing orbit and close to polar orbit is very difficult to see right once people see that that will open their minds to other things but i'll tell you something all of that can be utilized as as manifestations of seduction you really can if you're not rooted in faith you're going to start believing the narrative given by people you will if you believe history without proof that's given by people, you will believe the narrative given by men. They are super crafty. See, if you believe in history and you have no idea whether it were true or not, well, there are other things you can believe in too. The key, though, is to know the truth. And to know the truth means you're rooted in Christ. So stay rooted in Christ because it's only Satan who will tell you otherwise. Your adversary, adversary will say that. In other words, God gave you everything you need to continue. But it's up to you to use it. It's up to you to stand up. You have to determine yourself. Determine yourself. Hmm? Determine it. That's all. That's it said the truth of Christ is the only thing we need. That's right. And Christ said he, Christ is the one that told us about these prophecies, by the way. 
And you know what he said? Keep them. Keep the words of those prophecies. Don't change anything. Don't add anything. Don't take anything away. Blessed is he. Blessed is he who reads the words of this prophecy. Isn't that what he said? That's right. So we need that prophecy called revelation. That's not some optional prophecy. And it is a blessing. Do you know why it's a blessing? Do you know what happens when you don't expect something and something happens? I'll tell you, your whole world is shattered regardless of what you believe in. How many have gone through that? Your whole world is shattered. And if you don't know something, people can paint your narrative and have you follow something falsely. But if you know what your father has declared, nobody can alter your path. I can assure you that people's paths are going to be altered because they don't know the narrative. They did not take the time to investigate the closing of the matter. Revelation seals the deal, doesn't it? It shows the ending of a process. It even tells us what this process was for. But who's listening? It tells you why you're here and why all of that happens. See, all of it has to take place. All of it has to take place. It's not optional. And once you understand that, you'll say, thank God for it. And you can apply what you get from Revelation right now, and it will be a blessing to your life. Well, now. Somebody says, what is the spiritual explanation of people seeing and talking to past, past on family members? Those are familiar spirits. That's nothing but seduction. Listen, if you can talk to a family member here on this earth that is spiritual, then it puts into question anybody who goes to be with Christ. When Christ said to that thief, today you're going to be with me in paradise, right? When the other scriptures describe how a guff is there, you can get past that big, that big abyss, right, from the dead to the living, it throws all that out, doesn't it? So then all a fallen angel has to do is act like one of your loved ones. One of the most foolish things I've ever heard. It also suggests that the emotional subset and the memories that you have right now you're going to have when you're dead. Guess what? If your spirit retained all your memories, then why do people lose their memory with Alzheimer's or dementia? That's foolishness. Half the memories that we have here on this earth, they're needful for the moment, but they're going to be gone. We don't need them. We don't need them. Do you see how that works? If dementia and Alzheimer's did not take somebody's memory out and they can't remember certain things, then maybe. But we know that they can't remember anything. So how in the world does a spirit remember a toy, something like that? And then they come up with this energy thing. Well, spirits need a lot of energy. To, no, they don't. The experts have already measured what people call spiritual powers. It takes zero energy. In fact, energy is a word that explains something people scarcely understand. I guess they didn't go through the formulas of Einstein, nor extract Tesla's big epiphany. Most of what we work with, we work with the shadow of what truly exists. What truly exists is in another domain. The source of what is real is in the other domain. This is but the shadow. This reality you think is reality is not reality. This is a result of spiritual decisions, which can change at any given moment. If God reset this day, it would not be in anybody's memory. I do not subscribe to the Mandela effect. I think I've gone through and proven all that to be hogwash. See, when you're a child... You remember things differently, don't you? Versus an adult. Now, it's a funny thing. Those people who are very old, who are very meticulous, the Mandela effect does not apply to them. It only applies to younger folks who were young back then. It does not apply to the older ones. Why is that? Why do the older people come up with the precise answers and all the people of, of, of that younger generation have it all messed up? It's because when you're a child, you remember things differently. In every case, they got the Star Wars. All those who were about 40 years old when Star Wars came out, why did they get it right? Because they could remember it right. Why did the young people get it wrong? Because we were so young. That's simple. That's very simple. Other than that, there's no question to any of it. It's hogwash. Well, based on what people are doing, it's hogwash. 
even a dodo like me got most of it. I did not remember how most people did because I paid attention to things, those things I paid attention to. Anyway, there we are. There that is. There it is. Okay, folks. Boy, we have a lot of, uh, there's a lot to go through. There's a lot to go through. Something else is happening that has zero to do with the Mandela effect. Time dilations. Those are obvious. Like if you walk at your front door and you're in the wrong place. That's man's doing. That's not natural. Spiritual manipulation. It can be powerful. Illusions. Satan is good at illusions. He can tamper with your dreams. He can tamper with your reality. All of this is supported in the Bible of what Satan does. He can tamper with everything. Anything he can do to mess you up, he'll do it. To seduce you. Because if he can cast doubt on anything the Father said or anything the Son said, he's got you. If you doubt one thing, it's going to lead to more things. It will ruin your confidence. Period. Somebody say, Mr. Mike, is the Nephilim still beating Nephilim still beating? Breathing? You mean breathing? I believe according to the book of Daniel in the end days in the last kingdom before the everlasting kingdom, right? A whole new set of Nephilim are being created. People give life to some evil things. It, that's what I believe. But don't worry. We have so many interesting things that cover here in COT. I'm not going to say it. I'm doing it. I want you guys to make sure that you keep yourselves updated on the homepage. We're moving in some directions. We are. My job, my personal calling, is when a specific thing takes place to give you all the rest of what I got. I want you guys, somebody says something about Nephilim hives. All, you know what? Some folks, sometimes we hear things from other folks who've heard something from somebody else. I cannot comment on anything I got from somebody else. I can't do that. But firsthand knowledge of things I'm going to be passionate about. And most things I've, I've experienced firsthand are the greatest acts of deceit I've ever seen in my life, ever witnessed in my life. Absolute deceit. Once you learn the truth, you can sometimes get angry at yourself. But there's no going back to the innocent eyeballs again either like the talks that still take place between the leaders of these nations. What in the world are they up? Hmm? Say, can you talk more about 40 days? Nope. Just keep counting the days. Keep counting. That's the COT calendar. Today is day three. That's all. Today is day three. It will speak for itself, Bob. Let's be vigilant. All those days given to us. How about that? Let's be vigilant. So that on day 40, we are positioned. We are rooted. We are anchored. We're at work and uh, doing our thing. How about that? We have a lot of ground to, to cover. We really do. Lots of ground to cover. So, folks, I'm going to see you guys tomorrow. And like last time, it could be right before Pastor Paul. could be. No, I'm not going to do that. I had more dates to put up, but I have to get you guys vault access once I get that established. Okay. God bless you guys. I'm going to see you guys tomorrow right here at COT. Listen, remember, if you guys support someone, right, then support the someone. Support them. Because if you don't support them, I guarantee you Satan will attempt to take away from them. Whatever you don't support, Satan will attempt to destroy. Remember that. I'll see you guys next time right here at COT. God bless.